Hi all, uh, welcome to our Occupop live series. My name's Susan, I'm the marketing manager at Occupop. Uh, for those who don't know Occupop, we are an applicant tracking software that help, help HR and hiring teams really engage and attract the best candidates and manage the entire process on one easy to use platform, really making the process so much easier for candidates and HR teams alike. And um, so today we are joined by Peter from work it and we're going to discuss the topic of employee well-being employee engagement and recognition when working from home um peter lovely to have you and uh, it's really important to note that it's a very happy friday for peter because he's just become a granddad so congratulations <laughs> to you and all the family yeah. so, <laughs> the, world, the world knows the world knows yeah, now. the world knows now so his well-being is very high uh, so yeah we're delighted for you and welcome so we might just kick off and maybe you could tell us a bit about work it um, sure. and we'll go from there yeah. Sorry, do I not get 15 minutes to talk about my new brand? <laughs> That's sorry. Yeah, it's all about Sky now. <laughs> anyway, sorry for that, folks. So good, good, good to meet, uh, good to meet uh, those are those who are attending. So, and uh, thanks, Susan. Thanks a million for the opportunity to to share our work at Insight. So, uh, just to give a bit of bit of background, as uh, Susan says, it's coming up in lights there. My name is Peter Jenkinson. Um, I. Um, I'm a CEO and founder, one of the joint founders anyway, of Workit. That's W-R-K-I-T. And we can tell lots of stories about why, why we couldn't afford the O in Workit, which is probably the truth, but there we go. So we're called Workit. Unique. Uh, <laughs> unique definitely unique to us, if, if you like. But So we founded 20 years ago. I, at that time, I was a pilot with, uh, with Aer Lingus, the Irish National Airline, set up our first employee scheme, if you like, for myself and my colleagues. Uh, it was only ever a hobby at that time. And then the short story is in the intervening 20 years, our work had become by some margin the largest provider of employee and member uh, benefit and engagement uh, tools in, in Ireland. We're, uh, we're based out of Fitzwilliam Square. We're considerably bigger in the UK now than we are in, um, <clears throat> than we are in Ireland, probably with less customers in the UK, but the customers invariably have bigger staff groups. So we'll all understand that. And uh, happily to to note that during the during the pan in the midst of the pandemic, we've successfully launched in in Australia, and and actually we we just literally won our first uh, our first large client in Australia in the last couple of days, and it's very relevant because uh, the the RCSA, which is the Recruitment and Staffing Association of Australia, uh, have decided to to buy our suite of tools. Uh, to complement their member benefit proposition, so uh, so that's a big that's a big win for us, and it and it's related to to your own space, uh, Susan, and probably the same space as uh, some of the attendees. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think what we we have we connected two years ago was actually through Enterprise Ireland, and right. um, yeah, and and yeah. yeah, and we've been partnering since then because obviously nowadays, as we both know, um, you know, a good HR system is a system that connects together. So, hmm. you know, we we work, look after recruitment, you look after the employee engagement, the well-being, the recognition. Yeah. You can have a full suite model of different yeah. providers that provide an excellent service overall. And that's hmm. the real benefit. You know, we're yeah. it, it's super working together because the, the complement is huge. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I think there's been a massive benefit and a, and a great relationship so far. Yeah. I think to. To, to kick things off, you know, on that and, and the fact that, that that a company has been implemented in Australia, for example, can you talk me through some of the trends um, that yeah. you've seen really in the well-being and the recognition space? Because I know previously we talked about how it's actually shifted over the last yeah. couple of months. <clears throat> I suppose that's that's one of the that's one of the, if, if, you know, if, if you like advantages that, that we bring, because, uh, you know, as I said, in my in my comments to your post is like we're we are working with the great and the good so we're very privileged in a way to get uh, to get the data if you like and access to the data around the engagement uh, the well-being and the tools that that clients every you know every conceivable type of client like literally on the i was on a on a, on a team's call earlier on with with our own team and we've won a new client in the uk who have 20 employees and okay. at the same time, I was on a conference call earlier on with a client of ours who are multi multinational client. If you like, we have uh, services for them in a number of jurisdictions, and they have a total client base of ten thousand staff. 
So okay. in, the, in the same day, in the same day, our tools are deploying as effectively whether you have ten thousand staff or whether you have twenty staff. That's that's the first thing. The tools, the tools that we do deploy, which are which we see are critical to employee engagement and well-being and business engagement and well-being, because obviously what we're trying to do is affect the business, if you like, and the employee. So it's it's coincident. And the tools that we deploy effectively are, we have a multi-modular platform. The client can choose to deploy any any or all of the five modules. And they are mm-hmm. lifestyle savings, well-being, recognition, learning, and surveys. So the client mm-hmm. gets to deploy that, and then we communicate that out, out to the base. And then to, to answer your question around trends, um, probably for the first, so if we assume that work at our 20 years in business, I'd say for the first 20 years of our business, it was all about lifestyle savings. It was all about the, the discounts, which is a word we're not comfortable with using because sometimes it's an uplift or it's a resource yeah. rather than a, than a great, you know, 10% off. So for the first 20 years of our lives, it was all about the discounts and how much is your discount bigger than the other guys? And if it was, then you got to win the business, if, if that makes sense. Mm. And what we saw what we saw a couple of years ago was both, and particularly when we launched out into the UK, which is a much more competitive uh, space, Susan, as, you, as you'll know, and as, as the attendees will know, um, the, the what we saw was both the challenge and the opportunity to differentiate ourselves in this employee engagement space and bring more value by adding these additional modules. So that was the key mm-hmm. pivot for us a couple of years ago where we decided, <clears throat> we saw the opportunity, if you like, to segregate out our learning proposition and segregate out our well-being propositions. Previously, there would have been some parts of mm-hmm. lifestyle, but yeah. then, we broke, then we broke them out. Mm. And, and, and really, that's probably fair to say how the the industry has moved. Mm. Well, no, no question, no question about that. So, what what we saw then, if you like, on, up until March of this year, what mm. we saw was like there was almost like equal preference given to any of the five modules. People were interested in learning, and clients were interested in learning, and clients were yeah. interested in well being. But you know, I'll, I'll be honest, not not you know, a fraction of our clients were deploying them. And then COVID, then COVID hit, and working from home hit, and working from other places rather than the office, or working alone hit. You know, which is yeah. which is what we're much more familiar with now. When you know, when somehow working from home sounds really comfort comfortable, but working working alone is where <laughs> is where the challenge is now. Scary. And as we've yeah. worked alone for longer and longer. Uh, clients clients uh, of of all shapes and sizes across all of our jurisdictions are, if you like, embracing the need, embracing the challenge, um, and embracing the the obligation, if you like, to start now to prepare their teams for the longer term working alone. And we've seen a huge shift away, not that the almost the lifestyle thing is hygiene now, saying, okay, great, we have the discounts piece, that's great. How can yeah. we really, really continue to engage and support our team, and what we've seen is, and and what we've seen a, a, literally across cross jurisdictional is in the first instance, there's a uh, we saw a huge interest in our in our well being in our well being uh, uh, module, <clears throat> power positive occupational well being resources, and that was the first tick box. So we've deployed that probably now eighty five times to eighty five existing well not all existing clients sometimes new clients and what what's interesting about the fact that existing clients were deploying it these were clients that we probably introduced this to mm. in the last couple of, in the last year say listen this is probably something you should consider doing but mm. because that obligation and need wasn't there yeah. in, invariably many things that you know what we're fine we're okay we mm. meet in the office we're comfortable we can socialize this i can meet susan at the water cooler or or Johnny or whoever it is, and you know what we'll we'll deal with that. But now there's this obligation that employers employers and member organizations have, and they see to give the resources and the tools to the team working alone, as a you know as opposed yeah. to the comfort zones of working in an office or working from home, to be able to manage their well being and and integrate with tools that the client probably has. Many of the clients that we mm. work with already have. 
uh, employee assistance programs in place. But if you're not in the office and you're not seeing the poster and you're not seeing, you know, those facilities in, in the office, uh, it's you know, it's you know, the deployment of a of a digital tool to support that yeah. has been has been tremendous. I'm still going on the trends here now, so I'll I'll, I'll keep going. The other the other huge uh, change that we saw in terms of uh, of the activities on the tools is the interest in in uh, development, personal development mm -hmm. and professional development. And I suppose the most publicity you saw around that was, you know, sourdough, sourdough baking. Yeah. <laughs> it became absolutely huge and you couldn't get flour or toilet paper at the same time in, in, in the same shop. <laughs> That was a massive challenge, but we have we've developed uh, we've developed a portal where we've onboarded uh, at any one time four and a half thousand courses across mm -hmm. every conceivable subject for personal development. Literally everything from bread making to to crochet to car okay. making, all the way out to professional development, yeah. Python coding, you know, resilience at work, team building, and we've seen an explosion, if you like, of activity. Of where, where users and our and our base are are if you like taking the time or being encouraged to take the time that they mm. now move back from the commute. You know, my my you know my commute has saved you know not not having to go into town from from here has you know has given me back an hour and a half a day. And if you can imagine if I I uh, don't but if I if I do invest an hour and a half that hour and a half instead of being on the commute if I developed that into or, or deployed that on our learning module, you know, frankly, I'd be a completely different person mm. at the end of, the, uh, you know, with this pandemic or in, in the next quarter. So they're the yeah. two, they're two huge, huge, and there's, there's one other shift. They're the two, they're the huge uh, shift. Do you know and what I think though about that actually just to, just to, to make a point on it. And I think it does relate to the fact that, like you said, there was no real obligation or commitment by companies technically to take these things on until it nearly like much like what we've seen in our space is a lot of companies mm -hmm had to suddenly hire remotely or manage recruitment processes remotely, or it became very obvious that having mm. a paperless strategy was absolutely like of critical importance. So we kind of sure. brought to light the digitization or something that we use a lot yeah. in the space of the future of work, yeah. that it brought together all these, you know, utilizing AI, utilizing recruitment software, utilizing well-being and it's important, you know, taking the approach yeah. of learning and development and actually applying it. And though, yeah. it's a very complex situation i actually think in the long term companies are going to benefit massively from it i was just yeah. that, that's an observation we've also made in our point but but you were talking out on on another trend that you've seen as well since yeah. this all started yeah so the the other the other if you like complementary trend to 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 those two actions that we've seen is we've also seen a significant increase in the number of client companies now wanting to deploy a recognition module. So, so I, I wrote a piece on on LinkedIn. Like it feels like I wrote it yesterday, but actually, when I went looking for it again this this week, like I I put it up on LinkedIn in 2017 when we built our recognition software first, and uh, I titled the article "Recognition Trumps Reward." And it got a huge, absolutely huge uptake and view. You know the way you look at these things, and and I thought, God, that's going to be we're going to be inundated with requests. But of course, looking back on it now, it was probably because I had Trump in the title. <laughs> we got all the publicity. You get clickbait, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't know it at the time, but uh, but I know better now probably. So if you are doing a LinkedIn article, definitely put bait. Put bait. In the title. <laughs> it might give you customers, but it'll give you views. Yeah. For sure. That's another learning that we can all share. But the point, um, the point about that article, though, was that uh, we we firmly believe that recognition does trump reward. So that people, we we not only do we we don't stop. I don't want to say we crave that recognition, but we deserve recognition. And we've created again that seamless portal which aligns with the pillars uh, of the organization. So I can I can recognize Susan for for integrity for activity for teamwork and and socialize that seamlessly on on a social wall on on the tool and again that was something that we thought would fly off the shelf over the last two years and you know what we've implemented a number of times but it hasn't flown off the shelf 
it's flying off the shelf now because it's again it's another one of those changes and trends where we don't have that water cooler exercise we don't have the you know the yeah. bell the bell to ring when susan wins a new client or, or or whomever and we've created that tool and implementing that again on the on the portal has been has been a change a real game changer for a number of clients the i came across a i came across a uh, a statement on in an article during the week and, I, and i'm gonna i'm gonna borrow it and probably use it as my own forever and this is the first time <laughs> I, I, you've I, got yourself out now by stating you're taking it make sure you get this this term in but the term that they they uh the writer was using uh was effortless action <clears throat> and i thought wow that's exactly that's exactly what we need to do, what I need to do as an employer, and what our team yeah. needs to do, what you need to do as an employer, and 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 with the occupy uh, capacity, what you're trying to do is make it as effortless as possible. And we all have that. We all have that uh, challenge. And where we've made it effortless is by seamlessly having access to lifestyle savings, learning, mm -hmm. well-being, recognition, all in the same portal. Does this anecdotal activity that takes place so i might come in to get my petrol discount but you know what while i'm there if i if i do you know one well-being piece two you know 10 minutes of power 10 minutes to fuel myself 10 minutes yeah. of creativity development socializing if i say actually susan did a great job on that yesterday i must recognize it for that effortless action is going to be i bet you'll see a post from me within the next our probably <laughs> using this term effortless action but it is it is a mantra that i i think i'm recommending to, to everybody who's attending that you know the easier we make that for those of us yeah, who are the buy-in becomes yeah who are so working from home and working alone do you know what make it easy for those of us who are working from home working yeah. working alone hook up in an attic or in the box you know what used to be the box room which is now the office mm. Uh, so we all we all have that challenge. So I just felt that 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 was that was really important. And the other the other obligation, I suppose, that we have and that we see is the obligation on on business owners and team leaders and and all of us really is is you know to change to change what we're doing and mm. saying to mo you know to reflect the modification and conditions that our teams. Are working in because you know it's not that easy now to get that support it's not that easy to walk across the room to the techie and say johnny how you know how do i do that how do i fix it how do i turn this computer on <laughs> type stuff. so we all have to be cognizant i think of the modification of conditions that's that's taken place and the modification of opportunity as well by the way so for both and particularly for tools like yourselves yeah, well, I think what's what's come because it's so apparent, I think people underestimate is this was a new situation for everybody. So mm -hmm. not only staff, mm -hmm. managers had to learn how to re-manage really yeah. remotely, yeah. you know. And yeah. this is where the the theory of you know recognition and well-being as a support network, you know, as a support yeah. leader, as a as a business leader, as a manager, is mm -hmm. really so important, I feel, because you know it you're essentially shifting how you operate and you need to make sure that the staff that work for you feel like they're supported and that they're still yeah. connected because like you rightly pointed on and, and what we've mentioned so many times previously is the physical environment naturally allows for integration interaction recognition the physical presence of value culture that was all yeah. removed so so having yeah. having this kind of you know portal or this stop that that engages people on the different yeah. elements that are so important that we've seen mm -hmm. people want to mm -hmm. learn and develop because they have more time or perhaps some staff are furloughed but yeah. you know will be coming back and upscale in that time yeah. or yeah. you know a lot of people are spending time alone um mm -hmm. or a lot of people feel that their work because it's not seen when the bell's being yeah. rung recognition has gone down so yeah, yeah. It's this idea that something nearly awful had to happen for something actually really great to happen for business yeah, yeah. now it is you it, but it, and you, you mentioned an interesting point there where uh like the if you like the the anecdotal data that you get in an office again which managers were seeing they're they're you know the managers were seeing 
are feeling how the team were performing. Mm. You know, and you got that, and that, and that feeling the managers, and when the manager went off saying, well, okay, we need to address this, or do you know what, they're doing brilliantly, I'm gonna get coffee for everybody in the office or send yeah. them a gift or, or whatever. And again, one of the key elements of, of management growth and development now is missing because we're not we're not seeing that piece. So the other the other key part, and I don't want to bang on about it, but but data is key. And mm. that's the other thing that our tool does is there's real time data for the client. So I can go into the tool at any time, or a client can go into the tool at any time and see which which of our pillars, for example, are being used socially. So we had a really interesting experience with a large NHS trust who deployed our recognition tool in the middle of the pandemic. And you can see why they would. They suddenly had this enormous weight of work and weight of responsibility. And, yeah. and fairly obviously, an NHS trust anyway is not going to have money to add in rewards and Tesco vouchers or Sainsbury's vouchers or whatever. So they said, yep, absolutely, go ahead. And they had four pillars in the in that trust, which they've been, you know, if you walk into that trust, uh, that hospital trust in London, the, the pillars are up everywhere, you know, about their values. Mm. And the values are uh, partnership, car partnership, compassion. Gosh, I've forgotten what one of them was. And one was empowerment. I forgot what three. Okay. With, within a month, they were seeing that three, the other three values were being hugely valued, you know, hugely used. But empowerment, yeah. empowerment wasn't. And it was, a, you know, they've had these values for three years, stuck up on the wall, publishing them. It's on all their documentation, both their public documents and their internal documents. And suddenly mm. they had a going, hold on a second, maybe we're not actually empowering our team. So they've yeah. changed processes internally to reflect that and affect that already within whatever it is, four months of of having that having that feedback and that's what i meant about that modifying the conditions piece you know yeah. what if you have the data there are things you might need to change to make this a better place to to make working from home a better place to work mm. and oh well, we're on fitzwilliam square and the team from great places to work are down the road from us and it'll be quite interesting to see how uh, john and his team there uh modify the criteria the about, model yeah yeah how how is my place a better place to work now if you know if we're if we're scattered all over the place? So it, that, I, I don't know yeah. that as I'm talking, but uh, but, but I think on on everything you're so right. Everything should be agile. It's not a one size fits all for anything ever. You know it, that's yeah. the same with employee well being as you well know, and mm. um, with employee engagement because different employees come in and trends change and what people need and want change. So it's having that data and having surveys and asking your yeah. staff and understanding what they want and they need and really then implementing that into your plan. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know having a good base on on your values mm -hmm. and instilling that through so that, yeah. that kind of leads into a good question I, I i'd love to ask is what are some of the other examples that companies have implemented in in light of covid that you know well-being sure. learning development any examples you you have um, and yeah. that you'd like to share yeah well one of the one of the examples um well, like that, that trust example, the NHS trust example is, is a really good example because the other thing we've seen there, they've been a long time customer is that from the moment, from the moment, and it's a pity I can't share the diagram uh, <laughs> now, but from the moment we introduced the recognition tool, so mm. the recognition tool brought back in a huge part of the audience and it's sustained. So if we were, if you like, you know, having, you know, 200 or 300 employees a day using the tool, recognition was used, was it was introduced, there was a huge spike in the introduction, but there's now okay. a much higher sustained level of activity. And again, it's back to, there's now an opportunity to socialize in, and that and that's digitally socialized. So I can socialize with people who are incredibly busy uh, saving lives and, 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 assisting people but i now have a way of recognizing that because i can't go and see them they're locked up they're locked yeah. down in, in ppe or whatever i now have a, I now have a way the other really um the other really seminal moment for us uh in in early doors in the process is we had a, we had a very large client in the uk who have hundreds and hundreds of pizza stores okay and they're so you, you can nearly guess who they are. It has pizza yeah. in their name. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> and so when we when we went, you know, they came to us said, "Listen, what can we do here?" And uh, when uh, they said, "Listen, what we want to do is we want to trial the lifestyle and the learning piece." Just yeah. just those. So they came back very quickly said, "Yeah, absolutely love it. We'll take it. How quickly can you deploy this for how quickly can you deploy this for our 7,000 staff?" Mm. We deployed it and that was fine. And I asked the question saying, well, I presume it was the, you know, the deep discounts on Sainsbury's and Asda. And they said, oh, no, no, Peter, you've completely got that wrong. It was it was the learning that they wanted access to. OK. And it was one of those shocking moments because basically yeah. the HR director said, you know, we don't expect many of the 7,000 to work here forever. So the okay. more that we can do, the more that we can do to fuel them and improve them, the greater yeah. the opportunity it is. I'm looking at this and I'm going, but, you know, does that not mean you're going to, no, she says, wait, you know, if they stay with us because they're yeah. doing one of the courses or if they're a better employee for the six months that they're with us, mm. then that's a massive value add for us. Yeah. And that was one of those, that was one of those, wow moments for us at the very start of the pandemic where where it was again it was a client who had to point out to us the value that we were yeah. bringing to. so but so an excellent was, foresight on her part because uh, like it's, it's, yeah. it's you know she she uh, the, the the hr director has obviously got the division on the fact that upskilling yeah. not only will make them better employees but actually yeah. anybody who leaves the positive takeaway as an employer brand and the effect yeah. that has on those employees is a huge thing. And we talk about that yeah. a lot. You need to create a really positive experience for your yeah. employees yeah. because they are your biggest advocates. And I suppose mm -hmm. that, that example in itself is something that can be yeah. implemented by any company of any size to devalue yeah. the people you have. And, you know, to like really... Literally was one of those fall off the chair moments. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I suppose the other, the other example, and, and uh, it also comes from a fairly large employer that, again, that'd be well known to you, to, you know, to everybody actually as a brand, <laughs> but they, they, have 600, they have 600 staff. And uh, again, HR came to us short notice mm -hmm. saying, how can we implement this? We need, we need this. We're going into shutdown. The business was effectively shutting down and is largely still shut down. Yeah. And I said, yeah, we want this. Can we launch it? Um, we were just about to launch. I'm trying to make this as short as possible. And they said, well, actually, sorry, the CFO, the, the finance head, uh, mm -hmm. wants to see this first. And I thought, oh, God, this is not going to happen. <laughs> he or she yeah. is going to say, forget about it. We don't have. And basically. Those damn finance things. people, they ruin everything. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably offended half the audience you're attending. No, but are you joking? <laughs> the, interesting, the interesting thing was he had a look at it. And I I foolishly, if you like, in the in you know, as you prep for the call, I decided, you know, if he's gonna see this, and was it he, as it happens in this instance, I said, you know, I'm gonna gloss over the well being thing because he won't get that. He just yeah. you know just want the the pound shillings and pence piece if you like oh, okay if any of you are if any of you are old enough but as a grandfather i remember pound shillings and pence I'm, yeah I'm <laughs> um so he so anyway i made the presentation lifestyle learning recognition yeah get it get it get it and i said and that's it and he said well what about what about this one over here the well-being thing so mm. I, oh god he's gonna hate this clicked on the well-being, did the demonstration. And again, it was one of these seminal moments. He turned to his HR director, who was a Susan, and he said, uh, Susan, he said, if one person here gets the value from that well-being module that I believe it can give, that will pay for this entire program. And again, it was one of, again, that's, that was a, that was yeah. shocking revelation for us because what he saw, and we, you know, I, I met him afterwards, was that, do you know what? By looking after the team, if if that means that Susan or Peter stay on the team or stay performing or don't mm -hmm. leave or don't get sick, that saved me 10 grand, 15 grand, 30, whatever, whatever it is. And he said, that's yeah. all we need. One, one save by implementing the tool, by changing, by changing the capacity in the team, if you like, to effortlessly, effortlessly you know change their behaviors or modify their behaviors to improve or to stay well that's going to pay for the whole program so they're the kind of challenges yeah. that 
we we prepared for it three years ago almost at the wrong time if does that make sense but, but we absolutely we, you we, just you, you were biding your time and then <laughs> yeah. suddenly, suddenly it, uh, the, you know this this as you it's say seeing the demand, value. demand was seen and the, the yeah. value was well that's brilliant to see that like okay though and it, it dispels my prejudice that <laughs> finance directors are only about the money that they actually see you implement yeah. You, it's the bigger picture that implementing mm. programs like this, though initial investment are are actually paying off dividends in the long run. If you look yeah, at the sure. the long term effects on on staff, so it leads yeah. me to my last question before we'll jump on to to some cute questions we've gotten in. What would you then suggest would be kind of an immediate plan and maybe a long term um, suggestion? For companies what do you think how do you think the tr trends will change and what do you think companies should do sure. now to action that yeah look i'm probably not allowed to say this but call us and it won't you know and we won't always be the fit and the same as occupop aren't always the fit for every for every client so that that you know and we understand that so i, I um, believe we are but yes <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know i know i know even as i was saying that but we like I think that the trend, the trend is in the first instance that we see, that we see, and we've kind of talked around it, is persuading the decision makers. And they don't, they're not always the CFO. They're, you know, they're, mm -hmm. you know, they're sometimes they're sub teams or team leaders or whatever, persuading them that there is a way of modifying the conditions. Because regardless of how optimistic you are, there's none of us, as I see it now, as a CEO, you know, and we, we'd, uh, Brian, my colleague, told us that he he was talking to a large client of ours, uh, 1,500 staff down in East Point, and uh, they, you know, they were renewing their contract with us, so again, a large brand that that uh, that you'd recognize, and they, they were saying they never see a day now in their Dublin office with 1,500 people that they'll have more than 30% of those back in the office at any time. So we, okay. you know, so what we're trying to do is, if you like, is fuel those decision makers that there is a way of making working from home or working alone. This thing that I keep I keep emphasizing, we can make that better. And again, I'm going to use that term by this by by creating the tools that that the team need to effortless effortlessly access those capacities that make the attic or the bedroom or whatever whatever you know you know shed you're using out in the garden or wherever everybody is to make that a better place to work is is the trend that has to be absorbed literally mm. top down i think from every employer uh, now susan I, that's the way i see so it anyway. it's, it's really digitizing digitizing oh, the process sorry, and making have, it seamless yeah. No and, and in terms of of do you have do you think from looking at the last because i know there's been so many shifts even in the last couple of months is there any particular facet learning and development recognition is there anyone you see kind of really sticking as 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 a trend or do you think there'll be a shift oh i think listen i like what's fascinating what's fascinating for us around the learning piece is we we share with the client which which learning courses are are being used by their team? So we don't mm. they don't see Susan is doing bread making and Peter is doing coding, but they see okay. here's all the courses that are being. Okay, and it is shocking, shockingly, just in a surprising way to see the breadth of interest that any okay. team, whether it's a team of twenty or whether it's a team of a thousand, it's shocking to see the courses that they find because like that's. The other trend is that the user base, including us old fellas, are much are much more agile on our tablets and on our mobiles and finding what's, you know, we're much more intuitive now. We're much yeah. better. We're much better online. You know, I can even type with two hands now, uh, for example. For example. Can and, you teach like, my mom? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so there, there, that is the trend. The trend is, listen, this is going to be online you know, yeah. Johnny, Mary, whether you like it or not, and you have to, you have to, you know, have the capacity to fuel the team to be online, and and all the time, all the time, realize that, you know, the, the better capacities that your team have around 
creativity, whether that's mm. bread making or crochet, it doesn't matter. The more creative the team are, the more highly okay. developed and highly skilled the team are, the weller, if that's a real word, the weller the yeah. team are across those six pillars, whether it's, um, you know, life, mind, work, food, activity, or sleep. Sleep, sleep yeah. is, a, sleep is I, I should have, I, I, if Jason, our, our well-being director, is listening to this, he's probably going to give out to me for not mentioning sleep because uh, that's the superpower. And we spend okay. a lot of time, we genuinely spend a lot of time uh, helping teams, you know, even even making micro changes to their habits that improve their sleep. That is the superpower. Yeah. You've seen there's some fantastic TED Talks around the power of sleep and the, and the analysis they've done. So there are the trends, but it's, it is digital. We're we're one hundred percent digital. We're committed to that. Our team are currently based in, uh, you know, every part of Ireland. Literally every part of Ireland. Uh, one of our partner teams are now is now based. Uh, Camilla is based in Austria. Swabic at a Tech is out of Poland. We have a bunch of team members in the UK. Mm. You know what? It works seamlessly well. We all turn up on Teams. We're digitalizing our conversation. We're digitalizing our well-being. Our yeah. recognition. That is the trend. There's no, and that's not a science for me. That's that's out no, there. No, and it is. But I suppose what the interesting trend, what you're saying is, is is companies really should embrace both personal and professional development, and that yeah. is the trend. Really, what what I can from what you're saying, which is 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 hugely interesting and actually really beneficial. That that the trend of don't just rely on their professional skills because if you have whole well-rounded individuals, the the benefits of it are massive. Yeah. Yeah. So we might just jump on to just one or two questions. Um, so yeah. the first one is, is, do you believe that companies have good intentions for well-being strategies in the workplace, but getting buy-in from employees to, mit, to commit to these strategies can sometimes be a struggle? Wow, that's, yeah. <clears throat> gosh, I wish I prepared, you should, gosh, I wish I prepared the answer to this. <laughs> this might come out wrong, this might come out wrong, okay? And I don't want, to, and if it comes out wrong, I'll, I'll, I might readjust it, but. okay. The first, gosh, I'm going to struggle now. The first, the first thing is that businesses have to realize, or have to be, or sometimes have to realize, or have to be persuaded, is that. Mm -hmm. And I'm using this word again: the weller, the weller, the team are, the weller, the outcome is for the business. Yeah. And that's irrefutable. That is just irrefutable. Now, it doesn't always mean that the CFO, the MD, or the manager, or the team leaders, or whatever, get that. But that is irrefutably scientific, that the better the team are in terms of their sleep pattern, mm. their work pattern, their activity pattern, their mind pattern, the better they're performing, and the better that outcome is. So there's a, there is an ROI. There is a return on the investment in well-being for the, for the question. There's no, there's no question yeah. about that. Engagement, then, or persuading people to engage is is a massive challenge and it's a science mm. that is ongoing that is ever changing and again i'm coming back to this we're desperately trying to make it effortless yeah. and like to the to the extent to the extent and um like we we've a we've a new psychologist joining our team on september the first and the first thing she's doing when she joins our team on september the first three days later mm. she's heading to maastricht at our expense to do mm. a math to do a master's on the effect of uh, notifications to your phone apparatus on yeah. driving people into their learning, driving people into their uh, their well-being journey. So, mm -hmm. so that's that's a key. That is a key to make this as as seamless and as unobtrusive, but to create the engagement. So I hope yeah. that's the question. I think it does. Yeah, but I think one thing that I've, I've noticed from just all our, our the content we write is, and I know it's something you apply as a, a, as a principle, is it's not one size fits all. So if you want to buy in from employees, you need to make sure that you're not just creating a very generic well-being yeah. program or strategy. You need to actually 
know what individuals want because mm. no two people are the same so that yeah. that would be my kind of interpretation i buy into something entirely different to what somebody else in the business buys into and that's okay mm. but that's where businesses need to really con mm. have a considered approach that's where asking the employees up front and understanding that is important yeah. so i think we'll just one last question because we're, we're getting on but it's been a, a brilliant conversation is what would be three things you would implement internally to in improve employee well-being and recognition if you don't have the opportunity to use a tool like work it wow um, <laughs> gosh. Hey, well, like, like we're not saying don't use it but in, yeah, no, it's obviously me, but, it's it's not yeah, for everyone it's you know yeah yeah and and and, uh, and i understand that from from that, that that's an, an inevitable question you know why, why? Mm. so the culture culture is the driver isn't it like yeah like, and i don't mean just putting listen you know these are our five yeah you know, words, <laughs> sticking them on the wall yeah. sticking on the wall you know if 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 it's top down if it's mm. top down and the culture is exemplified by leaders like you and like whoever else is on whoever else is on the call that is mm. the biggest game changer that any organization can meet whether you're online whether you're a retail shop, whether you're an activity company out in the forest, if it's coming top down, um, then that is the that is the as the only alternative, as I see it, that that the the leaders the leaders lead culturally, if you like, to affect that to affect yeah. that journey. So because that can affect, by example, that can affect well being, that can affect recognition, you know physically if you like and that yeah, can affect absolutely that, that enthusiasm to learn and to grow and listen i want to be more like susan how, mm. do, I, how do i do that and i think do you know what i think it's it's not necessarily if, if if that's actually applicable whether you know using a software tool is is right or not that is the mindset that should be the case for mm. all that it's a top-down approach and i remember we did something as as business leaders in our company is we did uh, this thing called the bad leader and the good leader and we actually listed out our favorite bosses and we listed out our managers that we didn't love and, and the reasons why and the principle mm -hmm. was you adopt the things that you really admire about business leaders yeah. and your managers yeah. and then you become you try and implement that and invest that and instill that in yourself and therefore in your employees and live that by the brand i think it's a it's a great thing to I do yeah, because I, I had yeah. this conversation with uh, one of our UK team uh, yesterday who has onboarded a new client, large firm in the UK, and it's, mm. it's been a great win for us. And Sam made the point yesterday, God, you know what, everybody I meet in this organization, because over time we get to interface with lots of different people. So mm. HR, and then you're dealing with finance, then you're dealing with tech, and then you're dealing, you know, he did a webinar where 120 of the staff attended the webinar just to get introduced. And yeah. Sam's point, well, God, everybody in that company is really nice. But actually, what's going on there is that they've got that example top down. Top down, it pervades, yeah. It pervades. And that's, Absolutely. That's what, that's what I'd like to make your compliment. It's like they're your. It's like children. They absorb. You know, they You're absorb the your children. values. You're back yeah. on the children again. I know, yeah. We've come full circle. So actually, on that note, <laughs> on that note, we'll leave it there. Uh, but it's been an absolute pre pleasure. Um, the right. the web address is, is www.workit, like you said, W-R-K-I-T.com. And uh, you can find out all the information there. And um, Peter, you're on LinkedIn. It's Peter Jenkinson. And yeah. um, if people want to connect with you, and as always, people are very welcome to reach out to me if they have any further questions. Um, our next, um, our next live Q and A is actually going to be on the power of video for employer branding, branding and recruitment marketing, and that's going to be on the 18th of September. Uh, so I can see you writing it down there, Peter. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I hope everyone um, has a really, really lovely weekend. And thank you so much for joining. And um, thank you, Peter. And congratulations once again on the birth of your your granddaughter. Did I tell you I've a <laughs> <laughs> happy Friday, okay. everyone? Thank you so much. Thanks, Bye. 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 Thanks, Susan.